we've seen a lot of things change over uh, the time that we've lived there. Elena Dogay started living in her Merle Drive home about six years ago and now lives there with her partner. Dogay says they were once familiar with the homeless population and would try to help them with whatever they needed. But the makeup of the neighborhood has progressively transformed throughout the years. You know, if we saw somebody walking down the street, we would wait to leave the house. When our vehicles are in our driveway, we leave them unlocked with nothing in them. Um, because of you know prior break-ins to our vehicles. We have a separate back room that we've found people you know sleeping in. On the morning of March 7th, however, Dogay came home to a naked intruder smoking drugs in her living room. Finding someone in your home is shocking to say the least, but for Nick Marchioni, who lives close to where the incident took place. It could have broken in my place as well, just as easy as it was only two houses down. This has become the norm in the neighborhood. Probably four or five times in the middle of the night, I've gotten woken up to somebody in my backyard. Multiple times, people try to kick the door in to the property, to my shed. CBS Austin returned to the scene three days after the break-in to get reactions to the SWAT incident from residents. But all residents wanted to do was talk about how bad they say the homelessness issue has become there. It's pretty bad. I mean, from 311 requests to calling the police, definitely something that we've started to have to do almost weekly, right? And I know there's only so much that law enforcement can do for some of these requests, but it is definitely a weekly occurrence now. Residents there are tired and want something done about it. The focus, in my opinion, should really be on longer term solutions, mental health resources. CBS Austin reached out to the city's homeless strategy office. It says it and its partners have been conducting outreach in the area. In a statement, an HSO spokesperson says the outreach has included offering services on a voluntary basis, offering emergency shelter beds when available, and requesting for voluntary compliance with the camping ordinance. I understand that there are local resources that are trying to, you know, do some outreach, but I also think that there should be some accountability for what happens when those folks get to go home. We, we live here. We're left with all the effects of that and the people that linger. Thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and get the latest news by downloading the CBS Austin News app.